Okay, let's pick up with key issue two here. Where did English and related languages originate and diffuse? Uh, English obviously is part of the Germanic branch, but so are Dutch, Flemish, Swedish, Norwegian, Icelandic. We all have a common ancestral group. Uh, so is Afrikaans. Remember, that's a language mostly in South Africa, other parts of Southern Africa. Uh, remember, it's part of an ancestral group. A lot, consider who invaded that part of the globe. Uh, the Dutch originally, and then the English come in later. Uh, you combine all those languages, and you get Afrikaans. And so again, that you're part of that branch because of the common ancestral group. Uh, the origins of English are this. Remember, we we the United Kingdom was invaded uh, by multiple groups. Uh, early on, it was the Anglo's and the Saxons. Uh, there were Germanic tribes. Uh, if you look at the map there, you can see they come from northern Germany. Uh, the Normans, who were French, uh, the Vikings, who come from Norway uh, and Denmark and so forth. These are all going to be combined and mixed together, and we're going to spit it all out, and we're going to get English. Uh, remember, the uh, United Kingdom was not always a superpower. In fact, their official language for 300 years was French. Uh, and so that's why we have so many words in that English that are tied to French. And there's a list there. We went over those in class. Um, but just keep in mind that uh, all these groups are part of that branch. Uh, and that's why we're in the Germanic branch, because of all these groups coming in and invading uh, and taking the language that was already there, um, which was a little bit of Celtic. Uh, obviously, English is going to become much more dominant once they kick out the French. Uh, and as we know, it's going to start diffusing uh, around the world as they begin to colonize. Uh, first, over here in what is North America uh, in the 1600s, uh, by the, in the, well in the 17th century, they're going to take over Ireland and force them to speak English. The 18th century, they start expanding and moving to South Asia and the South Pacific. The 19th century, which is the 1800s, Southern Africa, as we just talked about with Afrikaans. Uh, we really don't spread it around. We get a lot of blame for it lately, but Early on, with that widely spoken English around the globe, uh, it's due in part to the United Kingdom. And when it comes to westernization and globalization, we're probably to blame today. But early on, the UK gets most of the blame. Obviously, it's becoming the dominant language of the entire world. Uh, if you remember what a lingua franca is, uh, that's typically a language that's going to be used uh, in trade by people. Uh, they share a common language. So the German person doesn't speak French and vice versa. The French person doesn't speak German, so they need to get a transaction done. So they have a common language. They speak fluently, typically. And nine times out of ten, that is obviously going to be English. Uh, you guys always got that confused with pidgin language or pidgin language. Uh, it's a simplified speech. Uh, it's similar to lingua franca, but it's not an actual language. Uh, you're, you're, you're kind of mixing languages because you don't share that common language like English. So you might have a little bit of Spanish in you, and you might have a little bit of English, you might have a little Portuguese, whatever it is. And you're communicating with that person through hand gestures, through mixtures of words and different languages. Lingua franca, remember, is an actual language that is shared by those two people, and they can communicate fluently together. Uh, it's very popular in Europe, obviously, because so many people over there speak English. Uh, you could argue that we need this one language. You know, 500 years ago, it wasn't an issue. But today, with a globalization and global society, you know, to get transactions done with bankers and pilots and advertising and the Internet and everything else, these are becoming, it's becoming an issue. Do we want to have one language uh, that is used around the entire planet? Uh, some people argue, obviously, it's not a good idea because it will begin to create cultural imperialism and begin to erode some of those customs. Obviously, if you want to participate in the global economy, what language are you going to have to learn? Most likely, English. Uh, don't forget about the Romance branch. Uh, this obviously comes from the Roman Empire. Uh, there's a Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Italian. Basically, if you were in the Roman Empire, as you can see on the map, uh, you were, you're part of that branch. Again, sharing an ancestral common language. <coughs> Key issue three. Uh, why do individual languages vary among places? 
Uh, a dialect is usually spoken by people in the, using their mother tongue, but they are they sound different. Uh, <clears throat> so think New England. Uh, you see the picture back there of somewhere in Maine, probably. They're still using their native language. They still speak English, but do they have a different dialect to the way they speak? They still use the same words. Uh, they use the same spellings, but they pronounce things differently. Uh, so obviously, we've talked about this before. We all use the word accent in the incorrect way because an accent is actually the way people not using their native language. Arnold Schwarzenegger's in the picture. English is not his native language. Austrian is. So when he speaks English, he speaks English with an Austrian accent. Uh, where people in New England speak English with a New England dialect, not an accent. Uh, so remember, there's a difference between the two. Uh, obviously, we have a different dialect than the people in Great Britain do. Uh, there's three main reasons for this. Uh, obviously, the vocabulary is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the spelling, we've changed some words to make it more American. Uh, obviously, the pronunciation is going to be much different. And when we say vocabulary, we're talking mostly about new words, new experiences. You know, when we found, got over here, there were new things that were obviously were not found in Europe, whether it was a moose or a raccoon or whatever. The other role in that vocabulary and pronunciation is we were settled by the poor people. Uh, we don't speak proper English because the people who came over here were not the rich. So if you remember the video I showed you of My Fair Lady when that guy tries to make her speak the proper English, um, we were settled mostly by people like that woman in the movie selling the flowers, people of the lower classes who didn't speak the proper English. Uh, if we were sitting in class right now, we'd be having a little bit of fun with some of the pictures we talked about for, before. What are those things called again? Soda, pop, Coke. Uh, and there's where we're supposed to be calling them around the country. Obviously, we talked about this in class. If this map were accurate, everyone would be calling it a pop here in Summit County. What is that thing again? A water fountain or a drinking fountain? Remember, a water fountain is what you see in a park. A drinking fountain is what you drink out of. And if you're from Wisconsin, it's a bubbler. Okay, the other issue we brought into with different branches is multilingual states. Remember, different countries handle it in different ways. Uh, if you remember Belgium, the Southern Walloons, they speak French. Uh, the Northern Flemings or Flemish, they speak Flemish, which is also considered Dutch. The issue was that the Walloons um, dominate the basically the politics of the country and they run the show and so they've made French the official language. As we talked about before, this does not sit well with the Flemings. And so they feel that their culture is being threatened by this, their language not being able to be used in everyday society. Uh, they're forced to speak French at school and they're not allowed to use Flemish. Uh, this is because the central government doesn't control and decides what the official language is going to be. They're not very receptive to other needs. Switzerland, on the other hand, is an example of a country that has a decentralized government. They don't have a strong central government. Remember, they allow the decision on language to be decided by the people who live in those particular areas, and that's why you have four official languages of German, French, Italian, and Romash. They let the people decide within those local areas. Issue four, the last one, why do local languages survive? Uh, a lot have been on the verge of distinction and have come back. Uh, Hebrew is a great example. Uh, obviously, as the Jewish people were scattered around the globe, particularly in Europe, uh, Hebrew began to disappear. Uh, once Israel is created in 1947 and 48, uh, in order to preserve that culture and bring back that identity of the Jewish people, uh, they made Hebrew the official language of Israel. Again, language is critical to recreating or establishing your culture. Uh, obviously, over the course of several thousand years, they had to add new words, and obviously it was complicated, and so they had to add new words to their vocabulary, but they were able to do it. Keep in mind, every part of the globe is losing language. Uh, as English becomes more dominant, uh, people are losing their culture and their language periodically. 
uh, whether it's South America, Australia, the Pacific Islands, even here in North America with Native Americans, uh, they're not always as lucky as Hebrew. Another one that's making a comeback is Celtic. Uh, it, they were forbidden to speak it when the English conquered them. Uh, it, it has made a comeback. There's different versions of it. There's Irish Gaelic, there's Scottish Gaelic, there's some Gaelic and French, or in France, I mean. Um, They've now made it two official languages. Uh, if you were a, sitting in a school right now in Ireland, you would actually be learning Gaelic uh, as part of your everyday language. Uh, and to make it, to, again, this is to preserve their culture. They want to be Irish. They don't want to be English. And to do that, they're bringing back their language. Uh, and so now they've begun banning uh, English road signs uh, and slowly getting rid of all those English influences. Uh, the other thing that plays a role in preserving language is isolation. Uh, <clears throat> think about uh, the Basque uh, up there in the Pyrenees Mountains in between France and Spain. Uh, they're in the mountains, they're isolated, and this is an area that's been rebelling against Spain. They want to create their own country, most likely, uh, kind of like Catalonia. Uh, again, preserving your language, preserving your culture. Uh, and look at Icelandic. Their language is very unique. Uh, it hasn't changed much. Uh, again, isolation is going to be a key to helping preserve your language uh, if you're so so lucky. And again, you can download this PowerPoint off of Canvas. Uh, the rest of the questions and practice questions will be in there. And I highly recommend using these. They're very helpful to kind of help you check for your understanding. Uh, true or false questions always start these off. Uh, language is a part of culture. Better have gotten that one right. True. A language family is a collection of languages related through a common ancestral language existing before recorded history. True. Remember, the key to that one is before recorded history. I'll let you download these and practice. Talk to you again during Chapter 6.